Politics makes strange bedfellows, goes the saying. Just ask Italians. Outgoing Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte convened by the president to stay on after the populist five-star movement struck a deal with former foes from the big mainstream formation, the Democratic Party. How can Cinque Stella swing from an alliance with the far right to the center left? Turns out both parties have big tents with factions that see this as heresy and others uh, as a not so unholy alliance. Supporters of the deal agree first and foremost that they want to stave off early elections, elections triggered by the far right leader, Matteo Salvini. As tough-talking, social media-friendly interior minister and deputy PM, the junior partner in the previous coalition, had overshadowed the five-star, but did the Lega leader overreach when he triggered what he thought would be those snap elections? More broadly, after 14 months of populism in Italy, with unpopular choices ahead on taxes and spending, what do citizens really want? Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at Italy's coalition surprise. Joining us from Rome, Silvia Cherilli Borelli. She's the Italy correspondent for Politico. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Michele Garacci, the outgoing Undersecretary of State at the Ministry of uh, Economic uh, Development, tapped to that post uh, by uh, the outgoing Interior Minister Matteo Salvini. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Paolo Modugno is a lecturer at the French Political Science Institute, Sciences Po. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, Francesco Saracino, Deputy Director of the French Observatory of Economic Forecasting, the OFCE. Welcome back. Thank you. The France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24 debate. 71 years, 67 governments, 37 prime ministers, 37 not 38, President Sergio Mattarella asking Giuseppe Conte to stay on after the uh, Democratic Party agreed to have him. Conte, who came in as a law professor in 2018, who'd never held office, and who's made a name for himself in this latest crisis. Colin Kennebrew has more. Giuseppe Conti, a year and a half ago, was a law professor with no background in party politics. He was propelled to the top after the Five Star Movement and Matteo Salvini's far-right League Party agreed to form a coalition government in May 2018. Five Star leader Luigi Di Maio chose him as prime minister in the hopes he could mediate between the two parties. Conte promised to serve as a people's lawyer. I'm a professor and a lawyer. Over my lifetime, I handled the cases of many people. I am now preparing myself to defend the rights of all Italians in all the seats of power, European and international. Conte, as prime minister, has been overshadowed in the media by Di Maio and Salvini, leading some to label him a puppet. Yet in recent weeks, he has proven himself to be anything but. Not only has he led Italy's government through a startling about-face, he has also seen a surge in popularity. Recent polls show him to be the second most popular Italian politician after President Sergio Mattarella, while Salvini's support has dropped. In his resignation speech last week, Conte slammed Salvini as a danger to democracy. Let me say this, the interior minister Matteo Salvini has shown that he is following his own interests and those of his party. That video has since garnered 2.5 million views. The next test will be whether Conte can retain his support at the head of another unlikely coalition, this time with the Five Star Movement's longtime enemies, the center-left Democratic Party. Silvia Cirilli uh, Borelli, uh, one fiery speech doth not make a politician. Are you surprised, though, at uh, uh, Giuseppe Conte's uh, popularity surge? Not at all. I think Italians are confused. They definitely weren't expecting a political crisis right in the middle of the summer. And Conte feels like he's one of the few very stable and rational figures on the political arena right now. He was a popular figure during his 14 months in government. 
he doesn't belong to either party, at least officially. Um, he, he was a neutral third party. And I think the fact that he was a bit more, um, well, he was a mediator and he acted as a negotiator between these two very uh, fiery parties, the League and the Five Stars. So um, Italians liked him throughout these past 14 months. And right now, especially after that speech in the Senate, it feels like he's the person on the political arena right now who can bring back Italy at the center of um, the, the political um, arena in Europe and also and probably he's the best person to mediate between uh, the five stars and the Democratic Party, who, as you said, are uh, each other's sworn enemies. So difficult task and probably the best person right now to try. Yeah, to, to, to think that just a few months back, uh, you had uh, in Rome this mural by Italian street artist TV Boy depicting Conte as Pinocchio with uh, Matteo Salvini and Luigi uh, Di Maio as puppet masters. Uh, that all changed for good when the PM tendered his resignation in that speech before the Senate. Yes, um, I believe um, it, it still depends um, from what perspective you look at this, because at this point, I believe um, Italians and Italy's European partners um, are at a point where they want stability, they want to avoid as much as possible uh, snap elections right in the middle of the fall, which is something that has never happened in the 73-year history of Italy's republic. And if Conte is the person that can guarantee that road and can guarantee a new parliamentary majority, it's okay. And according to some people in Italy and also some of Italy's European partners, I think at this point anyone is better than Matteo Salvini because Matteo Salvini represents a threat for many people and definitely for the European Union. So if Conte can avoid that threat and somehow keep Italy right at the center of the European Union and avoid its drift to the far right, Conte is okay, which doesn't mean I believe he's a great politician, at least not yet, because we haven't seen much from him. He's acted as a neutral third party between these very two, these very strong parties, these two anti-establishment populist parties that have done a lot, including as far as communication and social media presence. So Conte is someone that Italians and I think abroad, uh, people still need to find out more about. And I think this might be his occasion to prove himself as a leader and a real politician. Michele Garacci, uh, uh, in a cabinet meeting, uh, is he the man in charge? I'm sorry, I, I missed the question. Are you are you referring to Mr. Conte, right? Yes. Yes, of course. He's the, he was the prime minister. He has been now entrusted by the president to try to form another government. Uh, and he has to play the role as mediator between uh, the two uh, forces, the Five Star uh, and the we from the, from the Lega, who were coming from different points of view. Uh, if you recall, in May, we spent uh, a couple of months to have this uh, contract, which uh, melted together the different views of the two parties to try to form uh, at least uh, some coherent uh, uh, program for the for the government, which we did. And uh, the role of Mr. Conte was indeed to mediate uh, during the course of the year uh, any potential difference that would have arisen. And, and I, I think we, uh, both the Lega and the Five Star, have done a pretty good job, think, you know, given the, the original starting point. Uh, I don't want to list of the things that we've done, but uh, we introduced a little bit of the uh, flat tax, we lower tax rate. We introduced the reform of the pension system uh, on the Lega side. On the Five Star, uh, we also introduced uh, an initial part of the universal basic income. Uh, we uh, tightened security. We, of course, we had a very tight migratory policy that gave result. Uh, and I think uh, this is uh, uh, not bad. The problem was when we started to want to do a little bit more because uh, we want to be pro-market, pro-development, pro-infrastructure, and that means uh, 
pro-investment. Uh, and being pro-investment, uh, uh, you need to pay a little bit of a price, uh, and uh, this is where the difference maybe start to arise uh, with what could be the uh, next new government. Uh, we in the Lega want to spend. We know that the Italian economy is not doing very well, and I think every economist in the world agrees that austerity does not uh, work. Uh, we all uh, think to agree, maybe not 100 percent, that the rules uh, that the European Union imposes on uh, uh, budget uh, can be interpreted uh, in a more relaxed way, especially for countries that do need to spend the money. The question is so, then... So hang on, you're, you're suggesting, uh, you're suggesting the that, the, that, that the, the coalition blew up uh, an, an argument over spending? I, I, I'm saying the new proposed government, which now includes the left-wing Democrats that are against the deficit, they will find problems because the solution that the new government will propose is a low deficit, low uh, investment, in order to remain within, uh, tight within the uh, regulation of the European Union. What we in the Lega wanted to do and would have done if we had gone to election, which by the way is still a possibility, is a higher deficit, more investment, higher multiplier to stimulate the economy. Do you know why? Well, with what money? Yeah, with what money a, would a you do it? You're already, talk, you're already having to deficit, contemplate the, the possibility possibility of having to raise VAT Deficit. to 25%. No, 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 we will not do that. That will stay at 22%. I think every party agrees that there will not be a tax increase. We want to do a tax cut and we want to spend more. You rightly ask, where does the money come from? The money comes from deficit. That's what deficit are for. Remember, in the balance sheet of the government, every dollar that the government spends is money that goes into the pockets of the private sector, the citizen, the enterprises, the community. It's not wasted. It's a change of hands. Mm. Now, the question is, uh, we need to make sure that any money money that we spend on deficit, I want to be clear, we go on we would have gone and we want to go on deficit. Uh, by the way, like France did uh, up to recently, 3, 3.4 percent, fairly good uh, policy because it does need to do that to reboost uh, the economy. That's what Germany did uh, in the past. And this is what I think Italy needs to do. Because remember right, also, Italy is... Uh, uh, one of the few countries that always has had a constant primary surplus. So we only do deficit because the interest cost has been higher. All right, let me ask uh, Paolo Modugno here. Uh, why do you think that the coalition between uh, Salvini and Di Maio uh, ended? I think uh, that uh, Salvini make a lot of mistakes, and uh, especially in the international affairs, uh, I think uh, the problem starts with the Russian affairs, you know, uh, the, um, the question of a financial, sorry, the, um, the, the, the financement by the Russia of the, par the, the party of Salvini. Yeah, there Salvini. was that scoop by BuzzFeed News where they, 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 you had an aide to Salvini exactly. uh, trying to get Russian oil money to finance the party. Exactly. And... Uh, and after the, the government have a very big problem with European Union. So the big change now, uh, we have perhaps a, gov a government with Europe and not a government against Europe, as is the government before. Uh, and uh, I think... Uh, but what did voters vote for in 2018? Did they vote for a Europhile uh, government or a Eurosceptic government? Well, it's very complicated to, uh, to answer, but uh, uh, people, I think they vote against uh, the old party. They vote, they vote for a change, for change. Uh, uh, for this reason, Five Star Movement uh, was the first party in Italy because it's a new movement, very, um, very strange, but very new for the, for the country because people are... Uh, against the old party the, the, with problem with economic problem uh, cor corruption etc but uh, in general italian people are more in favor of europe than against europe so so uh, i think salvini um, win a lot of uh, votes and uh, and uh, rise in the italian politics especially for the immigration question but uh, the, the European question is a, 
is a problem for Salvini, and I think is one of the reasons of the change, because uh, for the election of in July of the um, president of the European president Europe, exactly no president of the commission president commission the five star uh, democrat party and forza italia the party of berlusconi they vote together for ursula mm. von der leyen and uh, salvini was uh, uh, against uh, alone. Fra Francesco Saracino, this question on the hashtag F24 debate put by Giorgio. How does the Democratic Party enter into an alliance with the Five Star Movement, which was in a coalition with the far right until a week ago? I have my own answer to that. The uh, Five Star Movement has always been an ideological party in a negative sense, in the sense it was not a party based on a, on a set of shared values among its members. It was a party that, as Paolo was saying, came out of a protest movement. It has everything inside. It has from the far right to the environment to people dis the, the, um, disappointed by the left, uh, workers. So it is really something which has many, many shapes and many, many souls. And so the party, when it, and this is why I think when it was in an alliance with Salvini, it became colonized by, by Salvini. And basically the agenda was set by Salvini. This is why Salvini made a big mistake in ending this government. He was already the master, even if he was not formally in charge. Um, so the hope of the Democratic Party is that they can do something similar to what Salvini did. They did a minority partner, a junior partner in the coalition that basically shapes the policies because the, uh, the uh, Five Star Movement has many souls within it. And so basically the, the bet of the Democratic Party is to help the leftist or at least less, uh, least uh, rightist and uh, xenophobic soul of the Five Star Movement uh, emerge as dominant within the party. It worked on the other side for Salvini and the bet of uh, Zingaretti is to see whether it will work for the Democratic Party now. Whether it will work for the Democratic uh, Party now and then of course there'll be that that online vote uh, of the rank and file of the Five Star Movement. Is there a chance that uh, this coalition will never get out of the box? Not because of that. I mean, if there is a chance that the coalition will never get out of the box, it's because the two are uh, very wary. The two parties, actually, both the Five Star and the Democratic Party, they have a long history of, con of, uh, of fights much more than actually the, the League and the, and the Five Star Movement. So, of course, they, uh, if, the, if a set of common rules, some sort of contract, like the one that was signed between the League and the Five Star Movement after the election in 2018, if some sort of contract is not agreed upon before the formation of the government, my guess is that they might not. So, wait, it. hang on. You're saying they're going to like, have to act like Germans. They're going to have to first agree on policy before they agree on names of cabinet members? But that is what happened, uh, that is what happened with between the League and the Five Star Movement and took them three months. Problem is that now we don't have three months because we have a budget law to, 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 to draw and then to pass. But let me say, there are a few points, and then I'll let you... Would we, we have to go to the break, so very yeah. quickly. Uh, there are a few points on which the Five Star Movement and the Democratic Party are not very far. For example, everything that is uh, policies against poverty, extreme poverty, income inequality, on all of these things, the two parties are much less far apart than people would believe. All right, when we come back, we're going to take a look at uh, uh, whether Matteo Salvini is yesterday's news or whether he's poised again for a comeback. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate. Uh, we're looking at uh, g coalition building Italian style, if you will, uh, what uh, with uh, the uh, uh, five star movement uh, switching allegiances and getting the nod for uh, uh, the outgoing prime minister, Giuseppe Conte, to form a coalition with uh, former foes, you might say, from uh, the center-left Democratic Party. We're talking about it with Silvia Scuridi Borelli, Italy correspondent for uh, Politico, who joins us from Rome, as does Michele Garacci, outgoing Under Secretary of State at uh, the uh, Ministry of Economic uh, Development here in the studio, Paolo Modugno, who lectures at the French Political Science Institute, Sciences Po, and at uh, the uh, French Observatory of Economic Forecasting, Francesco Saracino. Uh, if you're going to pick a political fight in August in Italy. I guess you have to take it to the beach 
We've seen a lot of uh, bare-chested Matteo Salvini happily posing for selfies as he made the rounds of seafront resorts, uh, triggering the political crisis that came to a head last week, dead in the middle of when the country's on holiday. No, Minister, please, you don't really want to call members of Parliament before or after the 15th of August. Poor members of Parliament. Then why not do it mid-November, given we're not in a hurry? Given the economy is not in a hurry. The country is not in a hurry. If we need to move things, we need to do it now. Uh, Silvio Sorelli Borelli, the uh, former uh, Rome correspondent for Le Monde, said Italians don't mind a political crisis, but not to interrupt their summer vacation. Did Salvini get it wrong? Salvini, I believe, definitely got it wrong, but not necessarily because Italians were on holiday, um, more because um, calling a snap election in the middle of the summer means Italians would have to head to the polls in the fall, which is something they usually don't do, and presidents don't call elections in the fall because it's right in the middle of um, budget negotiations, and the budget needs to be approved by uh, December 31st, so it's normally very hard to run a campaign while negotiating negotiating a budget, forming a new government, and then passing that budget. And as we know, it needs to be negotiated with uh, Brussels, so that's a very complicated feat. Also, uh, Salvini pulled the plug on the government 24 hours after Parliament had gone into recess, hoping lawmakers would be called back in two days' time. But it actually took more than a week, and that week was crucial because it gave the Democratic Party and the Five Stars time to reorganize and to start scheming to potentially form this new alliance. And also, Salvini, who potentially had three months to pull the plug on the government because he won 34 percent of the vote in May in the European election. And that's when things started going not so well within the coalition, because suddenly he was on paper and not only in practice the strongest ally within the coalition. He could have pulled it a lot earlier and made it potentially easier for himself to finally head back to the polls and to get the president to call a snap election, but to do it in the middle of the summer and to get much Matteo Renzi, who is basically the five stars sworn enemy, suddenly telling you 24 hours after uh, Matteo Salvini pulled the plug, we have to save this country for, from a drift to the far right, and we have to try to form a government of national unity with the five stars to avoid the snap elections. That's when everything changed. And after Matteo uh, Renzi gave that interview, uh, the day after Matteo Salvini pulled the plug on the government, everything started to move forward, and the two parties parties started talking. And even if the party secretary, Nicola Zingaretti, uh, initially said he wanted to head back to the polls, effectively, Matteo Renzi controls the PD lawmakers in the current parliament because he's the one who put them in place when he was still party leader. So if Matteo Renzi says he wants to avoid snap elections and wants to form a government of national unity, the secretary, Zingaretti, is going to have to listen. And that's exactly what happened. And there were two weeks during which these parties were able to talk to each other, to try to form an alternative majority. And the lawmakers were only called back when it was too late for Matteo Salvini and when his plans had gone a completely different way. So ultimately, it has completely backfired, and this has ended up in a major miscalculation on Salvini's part. Michele Garacci, the fact that uh, the League did so well in European elections, did that go to the head of Salvini? Uh, no, I don't think so, because uh, uh, the uh, results of the European elections were just a confirmation uh, of many ongoing uh, surveys uh, during the uh, first part of 2019. They had indeed confirmed what you just said, uh, Mr. Picard, just before, that uh, Salvini was anyway getting the upper hand on the uh, coalition. Then we had the confirmation of the vote, which uh, uh, this is the important thing. The, current parliament is the result of the election on March 4th of 2018, where Five Star had more than 30 percent and Salvini less than 20. The result now and the consensus now is completely the opposite, Salvini at 34 and the Five Star below 20. So the question is, uh, uh, we 
Lega, we, are, we asked and we will ask the president to go to election. There is nothing right wing about this. There's nothing, of course, fascist about it. Why? It is the so called liberal Democrats that uh, try to change but, but their minds. You just heard, put Sylvia, aside the you just heard Sylvia explain there's a very practical reason, which is this is uh, budget time. You can't have elections. Uh, if you're having no, elections, no, you're no, not no, passing a budget. Of course. Of course. That's not uh, correct. Uh, Spain is uh, probably going to vote. I don't know. They will decide. Poland will vote, I think, on October 13. There is no rule that says that we cannot have election in autumn. It is true that we don't have them very often, but uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to have uh, elections in uh, the middle of August. So we were planning, and we are planning to have elections uh, at the end of October, perhaps the beginning of November, which leaves another two months to do a budget law, which uh, last year we signed on the 30th of December. And uh, the scenario that uh, could likely come out from a new election, probably a stronger majority on the right wing uh, Lega, would actually speed up the process because there would not be a coalition as it is now of uh, four or even five parties. Because uh, remember, today's alliance uh, between the proposal alliance between Five Star and the uh, PD does not reach majority in the Senate. So they are short uh, of a couple of senators' votes. So they need to go and grab consensus by the small party. So we're already going back to the way Italy used to run the country with members of the Christian Democrats that needed to find a bunch of other percentage to reach the 51 percent. And this is what's happening now. And it is this likely scenario that could lead to a delay elaboration of the budget law. With the election, Salvini may be getting, we getting 35 percent. It will be much easier, much smoother. And by the way, uh, we have already planned the budget law. We know what we want, so it will mm. take us really a few days. So there is no really impediment. I said, I, let me remember, Spain will probably vote. Poland will vote. There is plenty of time. It cannot be that uh, autumn is uh, a month close to December, the reason for not giving the people right. the right to vote, because people have said that they want to vote in a different way that the parliament today is, is represented. It. And the that, that's an important is point. The, Let, let's the so called right wing wants election. Let, let's pick up on that point, because that 2018 election was watched by all of Europe. The idea being that the electorate wanted a new kind of politics. Uh, today, uh, that electorate divided between those who thought Matteo Salvini. Uh, went too far, particularly as interior minister, and those who are fed up with uh, the same old political merry-go-round in Italy. I believe that Salvini was, from all point of view, a failure for what he did, and clearly he chose the wrong time to blow everything up. I think this agreement is a bad thing because they have hated each other for a long time. And now they are forging an alliance. I don't think it's a clever thing. In the old Italian political system, there were the so-called founding fathers representing left and right parties. There was an idea, there were values. Today, there are only minor politicians. Today, there are only minor politicians, Francesco Saracino? Well, that, that's, I think, it's the Italian problem that goes well beyond the current crisis. We, right. we have a political it's not class just Italian, that is not up to the task, and it's not. Mm. Your, your show yesterday night shows that it's not just Italy's yeah, problem. We're talking about Brexit. <laughs> exactly. Now, the, 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 the thing is, I mean, this is how Salvini is going to campaign. Salvini is going to campaign saying that the, the establishment doesn't want the people to vote and to speak. But he forgets that we are in a, a parliamentary republic in which if you find a majority in the parliament, this is perfectly legitimate. And by the way, during the 2018 campaign, the League and the Five Star Movements campaign on very different platforms. It was only after the election, only after the people had spoken that they found an agreement, exactly as it's happening now. So there is nothing unconstitutional, nothing, nothing undemocratic in what is happening. It's just the way Italy works. I mean, you mentioned at the very beginning how many governments we had. I don't remember the number because it's too large. So that is the way it works in Italy. It may work, it may not, but it's, it's not undemocratic. Yeah, because there's this dichotomy. On the one hand, people are used to this. It's the, it's the parliamentary democracy that you have. And on the other, they really did seem to want something new this time around. No, no. Italians are very used to this uh, political mess. But uh, we have uh, 
do not confound different things. You can European elections are different from a political election, and the surveys is just surveys. So, I, I uh, what uh, Mr. Gerashi told before, I, I'm not agree because, uh, as uh, Francesco told, it, it's a parliamentary system. You have. At the, uh, the result of the election on the, the last election, you have three minorities. So it's impossible to constitute a majority in the parliament, a, a solid majority. So three minorities, they choose two of the three minorities, Lega and Five Star. It doesn't work. And now we try with the other uh, third. So, But the situation is very common in... Uh, and we've had a hard time as journalists defining what the Five Star Movement is up to now. Uh, we've called it a populist movement because it's kind of a vague term. Um, now, with if this new coalition happens, does it just become another classic political party? Will it be easier to define what it is? It's difficult to define. The situation is very moving. And uh, Five Star, as uh, we say before, uh, is not a party as the others. It's very uh, mobile part. It's not very uh, strong. So I think in the future, in the uh, next month, uh, probably we will have different adjustment in the party, perhaps the uh, Matteo Renzi, can leave the Partito Democratico and form a new party. So we, perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps in the Five Star Movement, you can have also problems. So I think the situation is very moving. In the future, we can see uh, different things, but... You, you mentioned Matteo Renzi. Yeah. He's the former prime minister. Uh, came into office as the wonder boy of European politics, left office deeply unpopular. Yet, as you say, he's still around. Uh, why is he still around? Because it's... Uh, Matteo Renzi, uh, it's a big politician. Matteo Renzi, it's a very good... The, really very, very good in communication. And for On this... On paper, he's just another senator now. Yes, but it's... Uh, a leader. It's a natural leader, it's a natural communicator, and for this reason, Salvini uh, fight all the time only Renzi. Because it, it's... Uh, uh, for Renzi if it, it has the strong to fight uh, uh, Salvini and Lega, and it's a very smart politician to change position, etc. So... I think in the few next months, it will be something for change. Silvia Cerilli Borelli, uh, the Five Star Movement, going into this alliance, uh, how would you define them now? What, 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 what can we say about this political movement? And, and uh, you, you heard Francesco Saracino say that uh, that internet survey won't be a problem, that uh, the rank and file will vote as they're told to. Well, the internet survey, I hope, won't be a problem because it would create a major constitutional clash after uh, the, the party representatives have told President Mattarella they're available to form the government. It would be an absurd situation if their platform uh, says they're not in favor of the new alliance and they then force the lawmakers to vote the alliance down in parliament. So I hope um, that will be the case. Um, of course, uh, the problem for the five stars, I believe, is that um, their surge um, and their success was mainly linked to their fight against liberal elites and the establishment. Um, they were all against what Matteo Renzi and the Democratic Party stood for, and it is Renzi's government that allowed uh, the Five Stars to become such a popular political force in Italy. At one point, uh, Luigi
Luigi Di Maio, the current leader, even said that if there were to be a referendum on Italy exiting the Eurozone, he would vote in favor. So they've come a long way from that time. Um, the 14 months in government with the League, I believe, has destroyed them because it's self-evident that Matteo Salvini was the strong partner within that government and that the Five Stars followed the way the League um, decided on policy and on everything else. Uh, Giuseppe Conte was also a neutral uh, third figure, but Matteo Salvini was the one who was shining in that government. Now, Luigi Di Maio, last night when he exited the meeting with President Sergio Mattarella, he said the past 14 months were the best government experience Italy has ever had. And the reason, the only reason for entering an alliance with the Democratic Party is to continue on that route and on the reforms and on the path that they started 14 months ago with the League. I think this is a very big problem because, as you were mentioning um, earlier in studio, the Democratic Party is hoping to actually be the stronger of uh, the two partners, although they're actually going to be the junior partner, and they're the ones who hope to shape policy. They've been very clear that they want this new alliance to be a clean break from the past, which is something very different from what the five stars have said. So clearly now this party that owes its popularity to its fight against the establishment, to the internet, and to this promise, this pledge of direct democracy, and the, the promise that they would get rid of the filter of parliament and they would be the spokespeople of the citizens that vote for them in parliament. It's going to be very, very problematic for them going forward. And I believe part of their voter base is going to turn their backs on the five stars after they enter this alliance with the Democratic Party, because effectively they are aligned themselves with the liberal elites that they've always fought. So what do they stand for today? If you ask them, Sylvia, they tell you they stand for... Have they, have, they, have, they, have they figured out that uh, after 14 months of excitement, uh, Italians have had it? Uh, enough of this experience. I'm not sure Italians had had enough of the experience. I think all in all, um, over 40% of Italians were in favor of the League Five Stars government. Many of the Five Stars voters had probably shifted towards the League because Matteo Salvini was the most popular uh, politician within that alliance. But I'm not sure their voters um, were happy that this government uh, came to an end. And I'm not sure most of their voters are happier that the Five Stars enter an alliance with uh, the Democratic Party um, as opposed to going back and trying to form another government with the League and with Matteo Salvini. I think the lawmakers are happy, but not the party leadership and not their voter base. It's, it's the, the, voters are, uh, the voters of the Five Star Movement are split 50-50, more or less. 50% say they should either go to elections or go back to Salvini, and 50% says that they should try this new experience. So All right, and just very briefly, in 30 seconds, um, I have to ask the France 24 question here, which is, Europe's, one of Europe's biggest infrastructure projects is this, uh, is this rail tunnel between Lyon and Turin. Uh, it's on, it's off. Under this coalition, would it be on? No, it's on. It's on because it's on. Okay. Conte decided this and imposed this to the five-star movement. All right, we'll see if that happens. Paolo Modugno, I want to thank you. I want to thank Francesco Saracino, uh, Michele Garace for being with us from Rome and also from the Italian capital, Silvia Scarilli Borelli. Stay with us. Media Watch is next. And we say hello to uh, Emma James. Hi there. Uh, no shortages of opinions on uh, this uh, Unlikely alliance, you might have said, of us just a few weeks ago. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, very explosive times in Italy right now. Uh, not just politically, but um, it's perhaps fitting that uh, the volcano on the island of Stromboli <laughs> has chosen this particular moment to erupt. Uh, some new images coming out today. There's not really a link. It's a bit of a gratuitous <laughs> attempt to, uh, to show you these images just because they are so impressive. Um, but yes, the plumes going up uh, a mile high up in the air and uh, very dramatic scenes, very politically dramatic too right now. Not sure if uh, the Italian version 
of the local was thinking of anyone in particular when it chose its word of the day, which is pazzo, which means crazy, but it can also mean madman. Coincidence, perhaps, or inspired by someone in particular, I'm not sure. Uh, moving on, not necessarily linking, Matteo Salvini is certainly not going to be going away quietly. This is what he's just posted on Twitter. He is calling on everyone to take to the streets on the 19th of October. He is calling it a great day of Italian pride. Um, he has put photos... Put videos on Facebook to uh, calling about uh, calling to, for a demand for democracy, uh, respect for the vote and rules as well. I noticed the Roman Colosseum there. Um, we don't see French politicians putting the Eiffel Tower necessarily. <laughs> Plus you can see that he is suggesting that the Colosseum is on fire. Oh, oh. Absolutely, that's what I thought. For a moment there I thought, <laughs> is does he have the Colosseum burning? But no, he has stopped short of that, but he is raising his fist in a combative way, uh, clearly saying that he's going nowhere and he's calling on the public to support him, saying, I am counting on you. Um, now, interestingly, he does appear to be using the same kind of scapegoats as any uh, anti-EU people right now, Boris Johnson and the like, uh, when it comes to Brexit. Um, he says that this is a government, the one that's formed now, in, uh, born in Brussels, uh, and he says the aim was to get rid of that pain in the neck, Salvini. He also believes that Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron are the ones who are really pulling the strings on this one. Um, so, yes, he's very definitely saying that this is Brussels, this is Berlin, this is Paris, this is not the will of the Italian people. Um, interesting French take on this, Le Monde, uh, saying that this is uh, the man who basically scored against his own camp, uh, scored an own goal, if you like. Um, they clearly think he has no one to blame for this but himself. They said he took a gamble trying to take down the government because he thought there'd be early elections and that his popularity would get him through and he would win, but it hasn't played out that way. Um, looking elsewhere, well, Plantu in the Le Monde as well has this take on it. Uh, you've got a migrant bobbing around in the sea uh, and Matteo Salvini in his uh, shorts in a little boat there and the migrant is saying to him, give up, they are never going to welcome you. Except if he's in opposition while the government has the tough task of having to tighten the budget and tell voters, hey, we're not going to give you that uh, basic universal income we promised you. I think, the, yes, the, it's very tough. The situation will be very, very, very tough. But, uh, you know, this, we are in the least worst situation for Italy. Uh, so The least worst situation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very backwards kind of a compliment almost. Um, the local, as with many other publications right now, are finally paying some attention to Giuseppe Conte. Um, he had been dubbed Mr Nobody. He's been in power for over a year, but he very rarely is talked about. Uh, he came to power back in June 2018. He's described in this article as a discreet former academic who has finally found his voice. Um, he has been criticising Salvini's obsession with immigration. And interestingly, given the cartoon by Plantu with uh, Salvini in his shorts, he said um, that Conte's government has worked a lot and wasn't at the beach because Matteo Salvini has frequently been seen, been seen not in his own office, but on the beach campaigning in his shorts. Uh, and that's what uh, Giuseppe Conte uh, has finally sort of found the voice with which to criticise uh, Salvini, and he chose to say that. Um, and of course, he's campaigning, even though there's no election. So interesting times. Um, there are a lot of people in the United Kingdom who seem to be taking a bit of solace from what's happened in Italy. Uh, and maybe this hoping what's called that, projection. Absolutely. Hoping populism uh, is going to be dealt a blow in the UK too. Uh, ideological opponents in Italy have just buried their differences to keep out extremism. No reason why it can't be done here, says Armando Iannucci, who is a, a comedian, actually. Um, and this person, who is clearly a big fan of the European Union, says, great news from Italy. Salvini tries to do a Boris, but the Senate stops him. Salvini, fascista, out, bye-bye. So it will be interesting to see whether the UK can come together now and form some kind of a coalition to out the populists. But, uh, yes... It's all, all to play for. That'll be one for next Tuesday. Indeed. When... Many thanks for that, Emma James. I want to thank our panel once again. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.